In this video, we're going to do something really fun. We're going to look at building a permanent version of the Arduino granular synthesizer. I'll leave a link in the description so you can read more about this circuit, but it's basically an Arduino board with five potentiometers and an output jack. But I think you're going to find this circuit is so much fun to play with that you're going to want a permanent version. So let's take a look at how we can build a good looking standalone version of this circuit that will free up your Arduino for other projects. The heart of this project is this Arduino on a protoboard circuit that we've been building up over the last few videos. If you're new to this series, let's talk about the steps you'll need to take to get to this point. First, you'll want to click the link and watch this video called Arduino on a Breadboard. This video will show you how to build up a basic standalone Arduino circuit and get it ready for programming. Next, you'll want to watch this video entitled Arduino as ISP. This will show you how to use your Arduino board as an in-system programmer and allow you to transfer a program to your breadboard circuit. Once you get to this point, you're going to program the Arduino code onto your breadboard circuit. The link below will show you where to download it. Finally, you'll want to watch this Arduino on a protoboard video where you'll learn how to build a permanent soldered version of the circuit. At this point, you should have the circuit built and programmed with the Arduino software. So let's continue. For the next part of the project, here are some additional parts you'll need. Five potentiometers rated at 4.7 kilo ohms. Make sure they're linear taper, not audio taper. Five control knobs. Make sure they're sized to fit the potentiometers you bought. And a quarter inch mono phone jack. For the enclosure, I'm using this aluminum box from Hammond Manufacturing. As you can see, it comes in raw aluminum and also some other colors such as this orange powder coat. You'll also need a 9 volt DC power supply. The Arduino circuit only uses 25 milliamps of current, so just make sure your supply is rated higher than that. Finally, you'll need a jack to fit your power adapter. Since we're using a metal enclosure, make sure your jack is fully insulated. In other words, the positive and negative wires should not be connected to the outer shield of the jack. Okay, so let's continue building. In this step, we'll install the quarter inch jack onto the circuit board. First, we need to identify the positive and negative terminals on the jack. If you take a look at the plug of a patch cable, you'll notice it has two parts, the tip and the sleeve. When you insert the plug into the jack, the tip of the plug will touch this piece here which connects to this terminal. The other terminal connects to the sleeve. In our circuit, the tip of the plug is positive and the sleeve is negative. Now, cut yourself two six inch pieces of 22 gauge stranded wire and strip off the ends. I'm using orange for the positive terminal and black for the negative. Identify the positive tip terminal on your jack.
and solder the positive wire to it. Now attach the negative wire to the shield terminal and solder it in place. Finally, clip off the excess wire with your side cutters. Now on your board, identify pin 5 on your microcontroller. The positive wire from the jack will solder to that pin. The negative wire will go to the negative strip on your breadboard. Here are the wires soldered in place. And this is what your board should look like at this point. Now let's start drilling the enclosure. Open the PDF file named Drill Guide, then select Print from the File menu. In the Print dialog, make sure you select Actual Size, as we want to print this out full size. Finally, click Print to send it to your printer. Use regular printer paper for this part. Now use some scissors to cut out the outline of the template. Remove the top from your project box. Center the drill guide on the top of the box and use some masking tape to tape down one edge. Now tape down the remaining edges. To make your drilling more accurate, it's a good idea to use a center punch to mark the center locations of the holes. You can use an automatic punch like I'm using or just a sharp nail and a hammer. In either case, place it in the center of the crosshairs and punch a mark dead center. Next, get your box ready for drilling by clamping it down securely. Start by drilling a smaller hole with a 1 8 drill bit. This is called a pilot hole and will make drilling the larger hole easier later on. Position the tip of the drill in the center punch mark. Then start drilling slowly until the drill starts to bite. Now full speed until the drill breaks through. Now drill the other holes using the same method. Here's a good trick to find the size of drill bit you'll need to mount any part. Go to your local hardware store and ask for a drill gauge. As you can see, it's simply a plate with different size holes representing the different size drill bit. Try the part in different holes until you find one that's a good match. 930 seconds seems perfect, but it's okay to go up a couple of sizes to something more common like 5 16th. Now drill the holes with the full size bit that you selected. The pilot holes we drilled earlier will help keep the bit centered. Once again, start out slowly until the bit starts to cut the metal. Now continue drilling the rest of the holes. And here is the result. Test fit one of the potentiometers to make sure the size is correct. Now we'll drill the back of the enclosure for the audio jack and power plug. Start by covering the back of the box with some masking tape. The audio jack will go directly in the center of the back of the case. 
Take a ruler and measure the length of this side. Divide this number in half and find the midpoint of the case and make a mark. Now, measure the height of the case. Divide that number in half and mark the center. Now we'll mark the power jack location. Measure 1 and 3 8 inches or 35 millimeters from the center line. Draw a mark at this location. Once again, measure the height and divide that in half. Now use your center punch to make a mark. Now we'll find the drill sizes required for the audio and power jacks. The audio jack will require a 3 8 inch bit and a half inch bit for the power jack. To drill, we'll clamp the part on its end and drill our pilot holes with the 1 8 bit. To drill the larger holes, I'm going to use this step drill bit, which contains both the 3 8 and 1 half inch sizes. And here's the finished enclosure, fully drilled and ready for the next step. Be sure to check out part 2 where we'll finish up the construction of the Arduino Synth project. Visit notesandvolts.com for more projects and tutorials and once again, thanks for watching.